Hi guys, um, just thought I'd do another video. Sorry it's been a bit late. I meant to do uh, a video on this sand battery um, months ago. And yeah, it's just been a bit difficult. It's, it, I've been mainly using it in the dark, so it's a bit hard to do any filming. And up until now, most of the weekends, it been, seems to have been raining or I've been busy or something's been going on. Um, so I just thought I'd do a quick video on it and a recap uh, just to show you that it is we're still working. We are using it. And, and it's been doing pretty well. You could probably notice some of you that have watched my other videos that it's changed. It was fully insulated. Um, I'll explain that in a minute. It is now not. Um, and there's a very good reason for that. Thanks for all of your subscriptions and all your questions and things. I've been meaning to get to, I haven't been on, on, um, on YouTube uh, going through all the messages and stuff lately because I had been meaning to do a video and I was going to answer a lot of those um, during my next video, uh, which is today. Um, but yeah, I'll, um, I'm going to quickly go through it again, the principles of it and how it works. And just for those of you who um, have just seen this video and then going on it, um, and then it'll save you watching the other two videos, um, because really both both of those videos are now kind of obsolete because it has changed in a certain uh, in in a couple of different ways, so I'll crack on with it, and then I'll go through um, some of the some of the changes that we've made. Get a burn on, get this thing um, up and roaring, and uh, and I'll explain on the way on what we've been getting out of this and how it's been performing in the way of heating our house. So right, basically this is what's called uh, well you can call it a mini whatever you like really. I call it a sand battery. Um, you could call it a thermal heater. You could call it a storage heater, but I prefer to call it a, a sand battery. And basically, uh, for those of you who don't know uh, how this system works, it's basically this top part here, I'm going to have to flip this over, this top part here is completely sealed. There's a tube that runs through the middle. And I don't know if you can see, there's a plate on the bottom. So basically that tube there is the same tube that comes out of the top. So surrounding that tube in this body is just full of sand okay what happens is we do a burn in the bottom this comes off by the way this top part this whole top pipe piece comes off um, we do a burn in the bottom here the heat and the, where the flame and exhaust goes through the tube through the center there comes out through the top and heats the body of sand around it um, it's just ordinary uh, it's not builder sand uh, um, but this is uh, it was kiln drying sand that went in there and that that was welded in um, so the only escape it's got which is just like a little release valve um, which we use for the first few burns just to remove any moisture and yeah and basically that heats the sand up from there and as soon as that's heated up it then comes off of there um, heated it normally takes on average for us probably about an hour and a half to two hours of burning and then believe it or not that will give us around about seven to eight hours really of really good heat um, I say really good heat it's enough to warm a room or sort of to work alongside any other sort of heaters that we've got in the house which stops basically our central heating from coming on which is as you know um, which is why we're doing all these sort of crazy things um, uh, is very expensive um, so this is a free source of heat um, the reason why um, I've got this and what a lot of people have been saying why don't you just have a, a wood burner uh, why don't you just have pipes and and extract the heat and pump it into your house um, and this is what something I didn't explain in my first video is I actually live in a flat okay we own this house the bottom part is where my mother-in-law lives and we live above um, so there's no way of, of, of um, of getting any heat from downstairs from outside inside um, and the reason we can't have wood burners or open fires inside as I explained on the first video um, was basically because the house subsided and we've got no chimneys so we, we can't have any source of heat uh, like as in a fire indoors so I just get, get that one out of the way uh, that saves a lot of people asking any questions yes it is heavy um, and yes it is a lot of effort but it's free heat. I've got loads of wood and this is a way of heating my house and keeping us warm when it's cold. If the electricity ever went off, which they've been, been uh, threatening us here in the UK, um, there's been rumours going around because all of our electricity is produced by gas and gas is so expensive. So the demand goes up. They've, they're talking about shutting off electricity. Um, so if that was the case, 
Um, obviously, gas boilers uh, use electricity, so this would be a form of heat for ourselves um, and a cheap and free form of heat for, our, uh, for ourselves in the form of effort. And effort is is nothing to to us, you know. It's, it's, it really isn't. Um, so the way it's, it's picked up, so basically, as I say, that will be burnt. This top piece then will be lifted off. Um, we have these handles. Uh, sorry, do that out of shot. We've got these handles which go on the side. Myself and my wife lift that off. Then that then goes onto a sack barra. And yes, we take it up some stairs. It is really, it's a, it's a bit of effort. It's quite heavy, but it's um it's it's very doable and it's it's nothing that's that's actually um caused us an injury or anything like that so so as i say it it, it gives once it's indoors it goes on another stand uh which is similar to the burner there but it's it's obviously not got a chamber underneath it just sits on a stand and then it just releases heat it heat it originally when i built this i built it and, and i did a video like this which you can go back and see um, and explains some of the stuff that I've just explained. But I initially had this envision of having it insulated all the way around the outside, and then there was going to be a fan underneath it, and that was going to blow uh, blow hot air, blow the hot air out through this chimney area here. Um, but I've I've since changed that. It's it was it was very difficult to get to extract the heat out, and when I was doing that, I was it was it was holding its heat for for something crazy like twelve hours. But it wasn't giving me effective heat for 12 hours. It was giving me quite a poor, a poor output. And that is purely because although sand is very good at absorbing heat, it's not particularly brilliant at releasing it in a certain sense because from what I understand um, now is sand is an insulator. So somebody quite rightly said on a video, um, on one of my past videos, is that if you ever go to the beach and you're walking on sand, the sand's red hot, but if you quickly sort of shuffle your foot underneath the sand, it's actually very cold. There's that line of where it's very hot and very cold and they're very close together. Somebody will explain this, I'm sure, um, but it makes sense, and it makes sense when I actually do it because the cold air, when I, when I was blowing the air through here, um, extracting the heat out through here indoors, the cold, cooler air coming out from underneath and blowing out through here, and the hot air, the actual inside of this, after a while, would actually go quite cool. Um, the outside would be sizzling hot. You could touch it and, and spit on it and it would sizzle. But the inside of here, you could actually touch where, where obviously, there was a bit of a barrier there. So this is getting very complicated. But so what I'm using it is now, I'm using it in the form of as in a radiator. So basically, all of the heat um, extracts out through the body and we get it out through convection. I put these fins in. Originally, I put them in when on the um, for the for when I had it fully insulated. It just gave us more of a surface area. I've left them on. Um, it, it it still works in convection very good. Convection is is actually where it naturally draws the hot the cool air from underneath, and obviously hot air rises, so it just keeps pulling. Um, so it does give out quite. In fact, in fact, it gives out a ridiculously amount of hot air out through there for the first sort of three hours. So yeah, so I am rambling on, but I'm trying to get it all in onto this video so people can sort of see kind of how it works. Um, I'm gonna do a quick burn now, and I'll go through some of the systems that we use, uh, that I use to, to get it to go, uh, and to get it as hot as I can, um, and to make it as efficient as I can. Efficiency, that's another question that comes up a, a lot. As a lot of people say, it's really inefficient. It, kind of is inefficient obviously um so is an open fire and realistically in a sense so is a wood burner i had a lot of a lot of um people sort of saying talking about the inefficiency of it however um for that so one and a half to two hour burn i will burn two of these buckets um one and a half to two buckets of, of these right and i'll put my hand on it okay so, so you can see the scale of it um so it's two of those um, is enough to heat this and get this up to it's probably around it's very hard to take actually to get a, a very good temperature from it I've got a thermostat that goes in the top when we finish cooking it the thermostat in there is uh, I'm gonna have to work on Celsius on this 
it goes round to 200 well is it maxes out at 250 celsius it goes way beyond that um and maxes out in fact it goes round right right back round to zero um so it's we're probably getting between on a good burn around about four or five maybe even 600 degrees celsius in there um so it is pretty damn hot and and on average um it will give out realistically i think really uh, about seven hours is is it's given us still effective heat and even at about seven hours it's still showing a temperature um from the inside of between 100 uh, a push but mainly really probably around about 70 degrees um so it's it's, it's meant to, so it's seven hours I, I still can't touch the outside of that it's, it's ridiculously hot um hotter than than what a well a radiators i think most household radiators are around about 75 degrees at full full capacity so it is it is a good form of heat it's it is inefficient in a sense but it actually for what it gives us um it doesn't actually burn that much and yeah and it's it's been doing really well so uh, it doesn't heat my house as i say it will heat it will just work alongside and it will top up our temperature um i've got other forms of heating in the house that we use last night was ridiculously cold for here in the uk and we didn't have the heating on at all um so so that just goes to show um it's it's mainly not all down to that. I'll show you the other system that we use in a bit. I mean, we put it into a room yesterday, we well, into our hallway, and our hallway was at about 13 degrees when I put it in, and it took it up to 18. And that, that's how it works. Well, obviously, that's not going to filter into, into different rooms, so we, we have substantive heating in, in, in some of them other rooms just to top them up as well. Right, so I'm gonna I'm rambling on. I'm gonna get a burn on, uh, get this thing going, and I'll show you a couple of bits that I do along the way um, to get this as efficient and it's up to temperature as quick as possible. Yeah, and I hope that makes sense. Trying to cram as much as I can in on this one because um, I know there's people who are probably wondering um, on how we was getting on with it and whether it was actually worked or whether I actually threw it in the bin. Um, but no, it is working. We use it pretty much most days, and um, yeah, and it's doing well. So I'll um, I'll get a burn on, and I'll do a couple of walks and talks as we go along, and uh, yeah, and I'll catch you in a bit. All of the wood I use is all scrap. Um, these are old bits of cedar tiles from a client of mine. Um, the wood that I actually use is um, is pine. Um, from that's from when we we re we refurbished the house, and and there's some oak stuff there, which um, which which I um, used to collect from when I used to do well, and I still do uh, wood turning and bits and bobs and projects and things like that. So all of the wood that we've got is free. I've got. Um, five cubic meters up there. In fact, I've probably got four now. I've used about a cubic meter already. Um, so, um, so yeah, it's so all of the wood's free. That's what it's all about. Right, so this I initially made for when I had it insulated, um, and it was, uh, it's just obviously an old, an old barrel. Luckily for me, it was a, uh, I think that perfume in it, it's, it smelled of alcohol, um, so it was a pretty clean barrel anyway, so it wasn't full of oil, so it was quite easy, pleasant to work with. Um, I just made a little door on it. Um, so initially it was for when I had it insulated. Um, if you see my second video, um, if you want to go through that, um, it was initially to keep it dry, so when it was out here, um, either cooking or waiting to be cooked, um, it wasn't going to get wet when it rained and the, um, the insulation would get wet. Obviously the insulation's off it now, but it actually serves a really good purpose obviously now um, because it obviously contains some of the heat um, which whilst it's cooking is emitting from the outside of the actual battery itself. Um, I do mean to insulate the inside of this, um, but just haven't got around to it. Um, 
it's not actually that critical, um, the inside of here. Uh, once, by the time it gets up to around about you know, a good temperature, um, this holds a bit of heat on its own anyway on the inside of that. Um, I can still access um, the firebox underneath. Um, I've got a lid that goes on the top of that and I'll, um, I'll go through that in a bit along with another little neat trick um, I use just to get the efficiency um, up a bit more than what, what it is at the moment. So yeah, works well that. to this is really just keep it loaded proper loaded all the time and uh, as I said earlier on um, it's all a mix of oak and chestnut I normally like to make them actually a bit smaller than this but just didn't have time this morning but it'll do fine Going back on the other videos that I've done, if anyone's um, cross-referencing from that, I've made some um, ventilation holes in the bottom, which we didn't have before. Um, last time I was running it with the door open, so I've made those there. I've got one at the top there, which I did have a pipe in there um, to try and get a secondary burn, but it didn't really work. It kind of works, but, um, but I've just left it open now, um, and, and realistically, maximum, uh, the, this sort of ventilation seems to be quite a good balance. Um, once it gets going so so yeah so that's the only changes really on the firebox um, that I've made if that's if you're um, if you've watched them on my other the other couple of videos so this is what I try and maintain uh, to keep flames coming out through the top at all times or as pretty much all times I can and uh, so then I know that through the body of the uh, of the battery is, is getting maximum uh, temperature and so so yeah, so I try and keep the flames coming out from the top all the time. So unfortunately, it is not at night, because at night this looks absolutely incredible. Um, it really is something to be seen. Um, I might try and see if I might have a video of it, uh, or I might do it when I do my second burn today, because we do one later on tonight. Um, I might do a couple of uh, short clips, um, just to show you it uh, cooking off in the night, because it, it does look quite nice. So yeah, so it's, um, it's now at full whack, and now it's just a, a matter of course of uh, just keeping it loaded at all times right well that's cooking i'll quickly show you um so we use this this basically goes into uh the hallway in the house so that will heat the kitchen the dining room and and the hallway obviously um the only other main room that we heat um is what we would like to heat obviously is the living room which is obviously where we spend a lot of our time um bedrooms not really worried about it to be fair um bedroom you go in there and you get in bed uh, you can have a hot water bottle in there um um, some of the heat does obviously dissipate through the house into those into those rooms, so it's not freezing cold in the bedrooms. Um, I've got two kids; um, they're not complaining just yet, so uh, so we're just running it like this. Um, but the, the uh, but obviously in the living room is another room that's obviously quite critical. Initially, we did have this in just in the living room, but then obviously um, the kitchen and everywhere else went cold, um, and then that would normally trigger the heating. Um, so we'd like to keep this in the hallway. Um, where the thermostat is, um, and that keeps the uh, the thermostat at bay, uh, it's not coming on, and um, and heats that them them rooms and that hallway um, pretty well. Um, so in the living room, I got this. Um, I'm not I'm not recommending this by any means, and um, because there could be an element of danger in it, but I'm just showing what I do, and and it works well for us, and I believe it's safe. I've not been told it's not um, on this particular model, but um, I'm not I'm not saying that this is the way to go i'm just sh showing you purely what what i do um obviously if somebody knows that it is really dangerous um let me know but i'm pretty sure that this is okay for what i'm doing um so basically um i've got one of these and it's a space heater it's there i know that some of the space heaters are dangerous and especially the ones which use a motor um and a tube um i definitely wouldn't go about using one of these um i got one of these because a it was cheap um, I think I paid 40 quid for this and B it's pretty much basically just like one of those color gas heaters that you that you can buy one of those square metal uh, jobbies 
Um, they were over a hundred hundred pounds. Um, demand on them had gone up, so they were getting ridiculously expensive. I didn't want to go out and buy one of those. Uh, I come across this. It's exactly the same. The frontage is the same. I should imagine the gubbins at the back is exactly the same. Um, so pretty much it is that. Um, I've got ceramic floors and we've got a heat proof pad which this sits on um, so that insulates it from um, from any wood that's underneath um, i.e. the floorboards so we're very you know careful in that respect but this thing packs a punch when it comes to the heat um, I, I was lucky the reason I got this is because I was lucky that I, I work in the garden uh, in the gardening trade and somebody gave me an, uh, uh, an old um, gas barbecue one day and, and that had a seven kilo uh, butane gas bottle in it and, and another client moved away and they had uh, and they left a 13, full 13 um, kilogram gas bottle, both of which have been sitting in my shed for ages, uh, in my garage rather. Um, so I already had the gas. So all that I do is pay 40 quid for this and, and then the rest of the heat so far is free for me through this gas. Um, and this thing is absolutely insane. I use it on the lowest setting, um, which is really pretty damn good enough. Um, and and that will heat. So then what we do with this basically is we put this on um, and just flick it on for an hour, turn it off. Uh, when it gets starts to get cool again, we flick it back on again. We don't have it running all the time. Um, we did have this running once, one evening, and without that in, um, because we couldn't, couldn't do it because of the weather, um, or it just couldn't be bothered to be fair. Um, and this heated my whole, whole of my sort of single floor. You know, the kitchen, the bath, uh, the, bath, the kitchen, the dining room, the hallway, and the living room. And brought the whole temperature of the house up to, to uh, 18 degrees from about 15. So it's it's pretty mental. Um, so so yeah, um, this is uh, from Tough Master. Um, as I say. It's a bit dangerous to light it. I will say that you turn it on and then you, you we use we don't we don't use a lighter. There don't seem to be ignition on it, although it seems to have something on there which looks like it should do. Um, but you flick it on, a big woof of flames comes out of it. So again, not recommended it. But this is I'm just showing you that we're using that for the hallway and we're using this to subsidise the heat in our living room uh, where we spend obviously most of our time watching the telly. Um, so yeah, so I just thought I'd get that one out of the way again. I say not recommended it but it works very well why you get the gas gas is about um, I did look at you know and I'm not exactly sure coming back to this again I'm, I'm not exactly sure that when that gas bottle runs out we've used the seven kilo already because there wasn't really a lot of gas in it so now I'm on the 413 um, I'm, I really don't know whether it's worth me um, actually refilling that gas bottle that gas bottle I think it costs about 60 quid 68 quid um, to fill that gas bottle but from the lowest setting on this, I've worked it out, it's pretty much the same as those colour gas um, heaters. The lowest setting on this uh, will give us between 50 and 70 hours burn time. So that will give us, so one of them gas bottles, uh, 13 kilo gas, lowest setting, should last 50 hours. Um, so I might actually get another gas bottle and just fill that up. Um, and I suppose re realistically, um, for that duration, if I was using heat my house with my with my, uh, with my gas boiler, uh, 50 to 70 hours um, using that, would it be about the same price? Would it be a bit more? I don't know. Let me know. If you know. Um, let me know if you think it's worth um, getting a gas bottle for that. Right. So that's that out of the way. Right, so it's been burning for about half an hour now. Um, so once I get to about 30 minutes, um, it normally means I've got a good base of fire in the bottom there, and then I put in um, what really does make quite a bit of difference. And that's, uh, it's, it's just like a mantle really. So basically this goes in, oh, I'm gonna sit for a bit. Um, so basically what that is, is just a, a piece of fencing really, a metal gauze, and that'll go in there um, and that super heat up that gets re proper red hot um, and then radiates that heat and slows the gases down inside the flue there and and proper then starts getting going um, it starts to get a bit inefficient in the burn um, where I get seems to get a lot more smoke coming out um, but it really does start to heat up and 
and and get things moving a lot quicker and the idea of that is um, I do some other videos um, but you get almost like infrared heat that thing glows r proper red hot um, almost white hot towards the end and yeah and that sort of infrared heat sort of radiates out around the outside of the, uh, the inside of the flue there yeah and starts to really sort of make a difference and I only put that in once I've, I've really got a good base temperature um, in the in the firebox there and it's really starting to burn um, and I've got a lid and I'm just going to put that on as well in a second and that just sort of helps things as well just slows things down so I'm getting to about a thousand degrees now so when I know um, when it's up round about up to temperature or it's it's going to at least give me a good seven hours of efficient heat but once I get to about an hour um, it starts to up here the exit of the flue, um, the metal around it, will get up to around about um, five to six hundred degrees Celsius, um, which is over a thousand. I think it's about well, six hundred of it Celsius is about a thousand Fahrenheit, I believe. Um, on the build-up to that, um, you can tell that the that the sand is pulling the heat out of the fire because the fire obviously always ridiculously hot at the bottom. Um, but some quite for quite a while of it, for the first up up until that first hour. Um, the sort of metal work and everything around there will be around about 300 degrees so that's just basically the sand pulling the heat out of the fire um, it, it's the same sort of concept when you hear about people who, who want a back boiler on their boilers um, all well and good sounds good um, having radiators and things you know heating water and having radiators coming off of your um, off of your wood burner but in that same sense um, the heating the water will actually draw a lot of heat out of that boiler, uh, out of that, that uh, wood burner and make it inefficient in that sense, um, or not as efficient in that sense. Um, and this, this, you can see this, you know, the same principle works with this, um, the heat. Once you get that sort of equilibrium, I can't say that word, uh, where the sand gets to around about four to five hundred degrees um, Celsius, and obviously the fires coming out of that, it just it starts to sky skyrocket. The heat really does start to take off on it. Um, but but up until that hour point, um, the draw of the of the sand taking that heat, which is good, which is what we're after, um, is quite it's quite notable from from what's coming out from here, from what's going in at the bottom. Um, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so we're getting there now. I think I've got I've got over 600 degrees coming out of the top now. The metal works are around about 500 degrees. Um, it's hard to, to get to get the temperature. Um, obviously, having the cowling on, um, but it is proper heating up. So it's just finished cooking, and uh, yeah, as you can see, it glows red, uh, proper red in there. Um, it's quite an intimidating heat um, from all round, um, but it's um, well, we get used to it, and once you know it, sort of, it's fairly safe, and it's not going to spontaneously combust or anything like that, which is obviously not going to. Um, but it is quite intimidating when it's red hot, and you just got to um, obviously just be kits gloves about it, and. And think about what you're doing when you're touching it or, or you're working around it. Um, but other than that, 
um, it's uh, that that redness sort of will go after a while. That's just obviously the metal um, really hot, and and it is just sort of super hot, super hot air that that pours out of the top of that. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration. I'll show you um, us. Um, obviously, we just showed you getting it onto the sack barra. Um, we'll just show you us uh, attaching it to that. So we strap it on and, um, and basically it's just a, a ratchet strap with a chain around it. Obviously the chain, uh, if it didn't have the chain it would obviously melt straight through the ratchet strap and it would fall off and this is just basically to keep it stable. This is not the kind of thing obviously um, at these sort of temperatures that you want to fall off uh, the sack barra uh, when you're taking it upstairs and because you're not going to be able to pick the thing up. So this is basically to keep it all in touch. Obviously the chain works in the sense that each link really stops the heat from transferring up into the strap and melting the strap and that coming off. So once it's on there, it's pretty solid. We've got, um, I put an old fire blanket um, on the base there and that just stops really realistically, it just stops the, the thing from melting the paint on the sack barra. Um, we did have it once and it, it caused a bit of a smell. Um, and we just hold that on with a thing. This is smoke. Um, But that's about it. It won't do any more than that. And uh, yeah, and that's it. So that's now ready to go upstairs. We get it upstairs. Um, it'll go on its stand, and and then it'll um, it'll heat us up into the evening. Okay, so it's now indoors. Um, that's the stand I was talking about. So the, basically, the top goes sits on that stand there, um, and that's how it sits in the house. Um, that's the thermometer there. I don't know if you can see that, um, but it goes around 250 and the needle goes, has just swung right past 250 and is trying to get back into zero. Um, it's still going. Um, so we probably got over, I reckon it's probably over 400 degrees, maybe even six to, 600 degrees towards the bottom, um, the middle and the bottom part of it. Um, so yeah, so it's proper hot. So that's gonna heat now um, all of this space um, for the rest of the evening. And um, and obviously everything that um, this is just for for us is very much an effort based um, heating system. Um, it's not going to be for everybody. I do understand that. Um, I'm not endorsing it or recommending anybody does the same. Everything everything I've shown you today um, is just something that that we do personally, and we do it as safe as we possibly can. If you're not absolutely hundred percent confident. Um, in, in dealing with this sort of stuff, then obviously don't do it. And if you can't do it properly, this has all been done absolutely properly. Um, things can go horribly wrong. <clears throat> so I'm not endorsing anything, you know, and saying that this is, is the way to go. It's just something that works for us. Um, as I say, it is effort-based. It does take a lot of effort to do it, but we're, we're happy to do that if it's actually, you know, if it's saving us money on our heating bills. So, um, so yeah, so I'm gonna conclude it on that now. Um, it's, it's pretty much done. Um, I won't be doing any more videos on it. I very much doubt, um, unless something really drastic happens with it. Um, so, um, so yeah. So, thanks for watching if you got this far, and um, and hopefully I'll see you on the next video.